And we are live. Hello, everyone. This is another, another Quest Army Hangout. Uh, I am your host, Geoff Brown. And this is going to be a fun one. Uh, long live the Queen. Uh, this week, <laughs> I don't think I'll need to introduce our guest, but we're going to anyway. But this week, we are joined by the lovely, the beautiful, the very talented Susanna Kishvintner. Oh, thank you, Josh. Did, 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 did I pronounce it correctly that time? Yes, you did. You did. Yes. You did very well. <laughs> okay. And then, and tell me if I pronounce this correctly. Bear Bear, are you there? Hello, everyone. Bear Bear the Barbarian. And we also have Lisselle. Yes, I'm here. The Copenhagen one maker. <laughs> and we have returning uh, the lovely Michelle. Hi. <laughs> and joining us uh, for the first time, Nina. Yay. <laughs> Hi, Nina. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and then, last but certainly not least, Stacy. Hello. Hi. Okay, this is awesome. We have a good group this week. Not that we don't have good groups. Well, actually, Marcello <laughs> kind of ruined that hangout. <laughs> He's going to kill me for that. Uh, <laughs> he might, yeah. He won't come back. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> let's go straight into it. I know there's plenty of questions because uh, my wife, Rebecca, has a window on the other side, and she's sending me those questions. Um, but let's, uh, let's start with a round table, and uh, we'll, we'll each um, ask the lovely Queen Rania, the 23rd, a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Bear Bear, why don't you kick us off? Okay. Uh, Your Majesty, uh, Bear would like to know, if you were queen of the world, what three things would you change if you had the power to do so? Oh, wow, three things. Um, I would, uh, hang on, I'm just, um, um, I would basically, there would be no more war, there would be enough food and, well, just enough food and water for everyone. Not just water, but like food and drink. And okay, and the third thing would be, um, wow, that's that's a hard one. I don't know. Maybe there'd just be music playing all the time. Whatever likes that. Food, music, peace on earth. Peace, like definitely heaven. peace. Enough food and water, for, uh, food and drinks for everyone, and and just yeah, and. and um, and music and art and um, yeah yeah well I I don't know yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful answer. Thank you, Your Majesty. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, Lisselle, do you have a question? Yes, I do. I was wondering, uh, Suzanne, were you given any sword fighting for the quest, and were you at all disappointed that the queen was always whisked off to safety before any fighting really happened? Yeah, that that got a little bit annoying. It was like there was so many, there was so many like um, yeah cliffhangers where I would just be oh take the queen to safety and you know protect the queen, and uh, I mean I wasn't I wasn't giving any sword fighting before any sword fighting, um, you know, training. I had some, uh, I actually, I mean, the queen was never supposed to ride a horse in the actual script. They were like the, the room guards on horses and the queen is walking. So when we had our first read-throughs um, in the Hilton Hotel, actually, I was like, oh, I really, really want to ride a horse and I want them to, to write, it, write that into the script. And so I was talking to Bertram, the producer, and also to the other producers and to Rob, and I was saying, like, listen, I really, first of all, I think the Queen, she wouldn't be walking, and and I can ride horses, so please, you know, let me ride, let me ride a horse. Um, and in the end, I managed to convince Bertram that it was a bad idea that the Queen would be on foot and with her room guards on horse. So we, um, yeah, so she was riding. So I was, I was doing some. I mean, I, I was, I had some riding lessons when I was small, when I was like, I don't know, eight or ten. Um, so I knew how to write, but it's been a while, so I, I took some extra lessons just before we started shooting, and yeah. But yeah, I would have, I mean, she was a warrior queen, but there should have been more actual physical combat. Yeah, I really think I would have liked that, but it's very hard with that, with those dresses I had on, you know, I could hardly yeah. run. Yeah. I remember seeing a picture of her, or of you, with sort of like an armor thing on your head that was not a costume that was not used at all. 
Exactly, yeah. It was actually, I've got it right here, it was a costume that they were not using because they didn't like it anymore in the end. Um, I actually thought it was quite cool. It was, where is it? Um, I'll find it. But yeah, it was, um, it was supposed to be when she is fleeing the castle, I think. They wanted her to be kind of like in, an, in, in this kind of gear and unfortunately it was never used. Where is it? That's a shame because it looked really nice. Yeah. Well, actually, my my little niece just before this hangout started, she just came in and she was looking through the pictures, and she just told me she saw that picture and she was like, "I don't think you look so good in this." I uh, here it is. This is the one, right? Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Dang. It was a leather piece, actually. It was like a sort of um, I think they call it Google in German. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Michelle, do you have a question for Susanna? Yes, I have. Um, if you could switch places with one of the other actors or with a paladin, who would you choose? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Um, who would I choose? I think. Um, I mean. Sir Ansgar, he was really tough. I mean, he, he also had a really, really hard job. He also, he, I mean, it was very hard because he had to be so, uh, um, yeah, he had to be really badass kind of guy with those with the paladins. So I think, I mean, I kind of like to play evil. So I guess I would have liked to play the vizier, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to say it, but you know, I definitely same like to have some wish wish action going on. You know. <laughs> Thank you for answering my question. You're welcome. Okay, um, why don't we pick on Nina next? Nina, do you have a question? <laughs> um, yeah, um, with that question gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, I have to check. Yeah, um, I was wondering uh, how much contact you had with the Paladins um, that wasn't shown on, on the series, that was kind of cut out. Or were all the scenes where you met the Paladins in the actual TV material? Um, I pretty well. I mean, pretty much everything was in there because we always. I think you already know that that the way we shot this was we had our sort of close-ups as we as actors before the Paladins came in, and then whenever. Sometimes we had stand-ins, but I'm not even so sure. I don't think we even had stand-ins anymore. We just did our our scene once or twice, uh, just us, and we had like our close-ups, and then they were like, okay, now we let the paladins in, and then everything just went really, really quickly. And then, um, I mean, of course, there were like moments, especially towards the end of of the quest, when I'm kind of leaving the castle and I'm in the forest with them, and we, you know, we we had this bit where we were like hanging out in this kind of den they built. Uh, for Saranska before with Saranska and then we were hiding in there and there were some really beautiful moments actually before before they started filming or like in between and uh, yeah we just had some really nice fun little moments together that then weren't cut in like they basically didn't make it into into this uh, into the quest but um, but most of what you see was pretty much in there but we also had some funny moments when I remember we were like um, walking in the forest and at some point, there were no cameras, and then there were like, somebody was saying, "Oh, it's really, it's really cold." And then there was me and Creo, and uh, Saranska and the paladins. And then I turned around and I said, "Yes, winter is coming." And then one of the paladins was laughing because <laughs> obviously they knew where this was coming from. And then there was some, there was something else. Uh, winter is coming, and what else is uh, from Game of Thrones? Is another very famous. Um, Whatever, very famous line, and, and and that just also made it into that conversation, which was which was funny because we kind of we, we didn't get out of character, but we kind of on a on a level we all knew what we were talking about, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, <laughs> Stacy, do you have a question? I do, I do. Um, so, was Andrew as flirtatious with you as they played up in the show, or was that mostly editing? <laughs> I think it's editing. I mean, I was wondering that because I just watched the quest now for the third time because people are like, my friends are like, oh, I haven't seen it yet. So I'm like, okay, so what have you seen? They were like, I haven't seen anything. So I keep watching episode one, two, three, and four over and over. And I'm thinking, I mean, the whole thing about Andrew, I think it's just the way they edited it. But I'm kind of like thinking now, he was, I mean, um, 
the whole thing with him not addressing me properly that was just funny and then and that made it I, I'm sure I don't know I don't know if everybody else um, uh, addressed me as Your Majesty that day but it just kind of seemed that Andrew's um, non addressing me properly kind of made it into made it into the show and then um, and then he saved me from from the poisoning um, so. Mm. I it didn't come across as it didn't didn't come across like this when we were doing the scenes together. I think it was more like the editing. I have to say, yeah. Well, thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Uh, actually, uh, I do have a question. Uh, I'd like yeah. to know uh, what was the audition process like, Susanna? How did you get the role of Rania? Do you want to hear the whole story, like from the beginning? Um. We got I mean, time. We we got like fifty minutes. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. So um, the thing was like I I basically it was like a movie really. I was like sitting in my apartment on a Friday evening. I think it was Friday evening, uh, at about six o'clock my time, and my phone rang and I I didn't catch it and then there was a voice message left and I just got um, didn't really get the name of the person. He just said uh, please ring me back. It's about an audition and I was like okay. Oh, I didn't even get the audition part, I think. I just basically rang back, and this person answered was like, uh, who is it? And I'm like, it's Suzanne Schwentner. And he was like, oh, where are you? And I'm like, in, I'm in my apartment. He's like, where's your apartment? In Vienna. Where in Vienna? Um, and then I told him where I live, and then he's like, and I was like, who is this? And then he told me his name, and it was uh, Fritz Fleischhacker, who's like um, one of the, he's the casting director who, who did the casting here in Austria together with Rob Eric, the producer. And but people here know that this guy does big castings, like he cast Munich and Schindler's List and stuff like that. So I knew that it had to be something important. And then he was like, "Just get into a taxi and come to my office now. Um, there's a big audition for this American TV series." And I was like, and I got really excited. But then I I didn't really let myself feel that because I thought that's just that would just get dis I would just get disappointed. So I was like, "This is not for real. Just keep you know keep it cool." So I didn't get in a taxi. I took the tube, and um, and then I got to his office, and then I basically just the first casting was basically just meeting Rob Eric, and uh, just making sure that my English was good enough. They just basically wanted to see. First of all, they were talking about the uh, they wanted a mid Atlantic accent, and I was like, I can't do a mid Atlantic accent. I didn't even know what that was, and they were like, Oh, it's like more like Lord of the Rings style. But then I think in Lord of the Rings, people have different accents, like creatures have different accents. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so they basically told me, they, they told me a little bit about the project. I didn't really understand what it was all about. Uh, I knew it was fantasy. I had to sign something uh, like, um, how do you call it, like um, um, a non-disclosure ag agreement and then they, I got the script a couple of days later and then they invited me for my first audition like maybe five days after that. And the audition, I had a little bit of background info about my character and about the other characters, the main characters, and I had this audition uh, scene, and the audition scene was the one where Ralia talks about her brother uh, who died of the, in the Great Plague when she, you have that dinner scene in the, in the, I think it was in the second episode, right? Yeah. That was my audition scene. Hmm. So, um, so, yeah, I came in, and the thing is, I was... I was thinking, I mean, my the first rule of drama school, the, not the first rule of drama school, but in my drama school in London, they were saying that you have to dress the part. That's like the most important thing. Whenever you go to an audition, you have to look the part. So I came in in a queen's dress. I had like this old vintage silver sparkly dress with like a, and it just looked, it didn't look like a normal dress. It looked like a dress out of a, I don't know. Just, it just looked weird, and I was, you know, walking around Vienna with that dress, and I went to the audition, and I remember, I think Rob was saying, like, wow, where, where did you get that dress? And I'm like, well, I, I bought it in a vintage shop, and, 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 and I guess that helped as well, and then I, um, I did the scene with Rob twice, and then um, he was like, okay, that's fine, and then he was like, uh, now I want you to improvise, and that was terrible. He was like, I want you to improvise a speech to your people. You've, you are a queen. You've been at war for, I don't know, two or three years. Your father has died. There's no king. And you are a warrior queen. And your people and your, your rune guards and your army is really tired. And you have to tell them, you have to basically give them hope. 
and give them strength and tell them what they're fighting for. So I was like, oh my god, the, the little voice on my shoulder was going, Suzanne, you can't do that, oh my god, this is going to be ridiculous, and I, I started this improv, my people, paladins, no, not paladins, but my people, and, and, um, and I kind of did this improvised speech and somehow managed to get to the end, and then Bob was like, okay, that was really good, now do it again, and then I, he was like, take your hair down, and I opened my hair, and I did the whole speech again, and then at some point I just didn't know what to say anymore, and I just froze, and I just looked at him, and I was like, my mind has gone blank. <laughs> and he just first started laughing, he was like, oh, it's fine, it's fine, you know, the first one was fine. Um, yeah, and then I basically, um, uh, I had a recall about two and a half weeks later, or three weeks later, it felt like ages, I mean, the whole audition process, they were, pro I mean, they were auditioning so many people, and, you know, you hear from colleagues, oh, I'm going up for the same part, and she's going up for the same part, and also her, and it's like everybody I pretty much know was, like, heard of it or was going up for, for one of the parts. Um, and then I went back to the recall, and they had some sort of, a little bit of costume that we put on, I did the same scene again, and then I had to do a different uh, improvisation, and I was just going there on the tube thinking, oh my god, they're going to make me do the war speech again, and I was like, what's a good war speech? So I typed into Google, war speeches, and then I found the one by Winston Churchill, uh, countrymen, something like that, and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, like, fix this to every realm, I have to, like, think of something, and then he made me do something completely different, so it was fine. Um, and then, yeah, and then he basically told me that, um, he just, Rob told me for the second edition that he was, uh, that I just basically, that he had no notes for me, he was like, do the same thing again, and the improvisation, it was really, you did really well, and, you know, we were really interested, and then I had to, I was waiting for another two weeks, I think, and then I got a phone call while I was on holiday, actually, um, that I had the part. Yeah, it was wow. really cool. And as a as a follow up to that, um, what was it about Ralia that made you want the part? That made me want the part. I mean, yeah. it was just. Um, I think it was just. First of all, it's really interesting because she she is. I mean, she's by herself. And she's not an evil. Um, she's not an evil um, queen as well. I mean, I was before I actually did the quest. I was watching a lot of movies, like also as part of research, and I was looking at at, at this movie Elizabeth with um, uh, what's her name? Oh my God, my mind today. Um, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Thank you. Um, and this is a wicked character. I mean, she's amazing. And um, but I was like. I was thinking, I watched all that, and I was like, well, but that's not Ralia, you know, that's not her at all, she's not, she's not like that, she's, she's, I mean, it even says in the description, she's like, she, she's not of the people, but she is with the people, or something like that, so she's not like, um, um, she's somehow regal, but she is definitely not like, um, I don't know, she's like on the same level, you know, not on the same level, but kind of, she's very close to the people. Yeah, she's she's very close to the people, and she's uh, but she's strong, and she had to do, she had to deal with a lot of um, difficult things that were happening in her life, and um, and she, yeah, and she's strong, and she believes in the prophecy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it was the perfect part. It was also the fact that she was actually, you know, fighting herself. And not just giving orders. I mean, I would have liked to do more fighting, like we talked, like we said before. But yeah. Okay, that's that's awesome. Um, before uh, we do another roundtable of questions, I am going to ask one from Twitter. Uh, I have a question from Candy Star. Uh, how hard was it? You actually mentioned the improvisation uh, in the audition. How hard was it to stick to the script? when you had the paladins not having a script and you know you're reacting to the paladins cuz um you and, and and the other cast you made it look easy and i know it wasn't so um yeah how hard was it to um improvise with the paladins do you mean i mean sticking to the script or improvising how, um how hard was it to stick to the script when sticking to reacting the... to the paladins okay uh i see what you mean um mm. Well, I mean, in the beginning, my scenes were more like they were scenes. Yeah. 
none of the paladins would have said anything when they first when they meet the queen for the first time. So it was clear that this is all going to happen. We have our scene. Then there's the cliffhanger. Then they take me away. So I had, I mean, what um, Peter Windhofer had from the beginning, like Saranska with the paladins. I didn't have that until later um, throughout the process because we first when we yeah when we left the castle and we I was like spending more time with the paladins. Um, that's when it also started for me. But it was great. I mean, the, the the scary thing was that I was thinking, oh my god, they are much more in it than we are. <laughs> they're like, they are be they believe in it totally, even when there's no camera there. Because sometimes it happened that the really really good things were happening when there was nobody around, or like j just when something happened when we left Saranska behind um, the the the. the, the what was it, the Dark Riders came and he was like, go, go, and we were leaving, we were running away, and then I think Shonda turned around, he's like, we can't leave, and he was like, no, we have to, and then we turned around the corner, and the conversation that was happening there was just amazing, and then the cameras were running, you know, after us and, like, positioning themselves, and then I was thinking as an actress, I was like, oh, my God, I have to, they have to repeat this somehow, we have to keep this energy and, like, make them repeat, make them say what they just said, so you kind of find a way to maybe... You don't want you don't want them to act, but you kind of find a way to maybe uh, make them repeat the same thing again because some of that was just gold, you know. It was yeah. it was amazing, and they were just really. I mean, it was so easy because they were so in it. I mean, I was a little bit scared in the beginning of having to do all this improvisation because <clears throat> I was pretty much one of the last ones who was really like uh, in close contact with the paladins. But when it was happening, it was just it was really really cool. That's awesome. Um, okay, let's do another round table. Bear Bear, do you have another question? Uh, yes, uh, it came to me as um, as Your Majesty has uh, thought that you had interest in music and a lot of artworks. Could you give some examples of some of your favorites? Uh, favorite music or favorite artworks? Oh, Both? Nice. Yeah. Um, phew, favorite music. I mean, I, I really like uh, jazz. I really think jazz is like Oh, it's just, jazz is just everything, it's like life, I feel like jazz is like, um, uh, it just has so many facets, just like life, and when I listen to jazz, I just feel really good, always. Depends on which kind of jazz, and there's obviously different, I like Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, um, what else do I listen to? I mean, I, I listen to all sorts of music, the only thing I don't really like is R&B, I think, unless it's really good. I like hip hop. I love dancing to hip hop, um, kind of '90s hip hop, you know, old school. Um, uh, yeah, and and artwork. I'm just thinking. I mean, one of my favorite artists is uh, Egon Schiele. Don't know if you know him. He's Austrian. He he did a lot of like really beautiful drawings of nudes. Um, favorite artists. Oh my God, I have. I like. I like Miro. I have to ask me very difficult questions, Bear Bear. It's like I have to prepare. It's like, whoa. Wow. I, I, I will, uh, I'll get back to you when I think of more. <laughs> well, I'll, 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 very interesting. I'll look up the artist that you mentioned. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Do you like the jazz? Any Frank Sinatra or the rap pack? Do you like any of yeah, those guys? Yeah, definitely. I like Frank Sinatra, right. for sure. I love those guys. Yeah, definitely. I just listened to him today, actually. He was playing on the radio yesterday. And it was just feel-good music. It's great. Thank you, Your Majesty. You're welcome. There, there. <laughs> Lisselle, do you have a question? I do. Mm -hmm. I was um, I was wondering whether you have done any fantasy style things before, and whether it's something that you would you know apart from the obvious want for a season two. Is it something you would like to do again? Oh yeah. Definitely. Uh, I haven't, let me just think for one second if I have done any fantasy thing like this before. Well, not, not, yeah, no, not like that. Not like in a sort of fairy tale kind of world. I mean, I've done obviously um, other things where you live in a, in a different world, but not like this, no. And yeah, I mean, I think it's just a dream, especially if, if you have, I mean, as a girl, as a woman, if you have like pretty dresses and you have 
laces and 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 satin and gold and jewelry and you have horses and it's in nature i mean i think for me it was just a perfect combination it was basically doing what i love doing um in a beautiful surrounding with horses and i just love horses i think i love horses more than i love riding them actually um and uh yeah and it was just i i felt like it was in my element you know i never wanted to leave um, I think that's what Marcello mentioned as well in the in the in the hangout that whenever he wasn't shooting, whenever he had a day off, he just wanted to be there, and it was the same here. They were like, Suzanne, what are you doing on set? I'm like, oh, I managed to get a writing lesson, you know. Uh, I know I have to, I don't have to be on set today, but I just, you know, I'm just going over there and I'm just going to do some writing lessons with the guys in the meantime, you know, because I just wanted to be there. I mean, as much as possible, because I I also know that you know. Unfortunately, it's only for a certain amount of time, and then real life happens again, and then you have to find a new job, and it's not always so easy as as an actor. Um, so I just knew that I had to like you know uh, have every second of it, like be there as much as I can, take it all in like a sponge, because um, once it's over, it's over, you know. Yeah. You mentioned you mentioned Game of Thrones to us earlier. Is this something you watch? That Lord of the Rings, any other inspirational material? Definitely. Uh, I mean, Lord of the Rings, uh, I loved, and obviously, and uh, yeah, and Game of Thrones was just something that I was watching at the time, and then I think it was even happening. So I had another reason. I was like, oh, I got the part, so I have to, I have to watch Game of Thrones anyway because it's part of my research now. You know, so it was like, um, it was yeah, definitely. Um, what else was an influence? I mean, I watched Elizabeth, like I said, and. Other Queen movies, yeah. I was just basically researching queens, different queens. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Michelle, do you have another question? Uh, yes, I have. <coughs> the scene in which the queen was potioned, how long did it take for the makeup artist to put on all the makeup to make you look ill? Um, that was a special effect makeup, actually. That was, um, it took them about, um, I'd say a bit more than an hour, an hour and a half. Because the thing is that I was, I think so, yeah, an hour and a half. They, they, they used airbrush, and it was really creepy because they, um, it was two women who worked on me, and then in the end they, they used uh, an airbrush, and they, they airbrushed veins, like my veins on my, on my hands and down here onto me and that was just and also a little bit here and stuff and it just looked so horrible and I remember on set that day uh, you know when you walk around and you hang around or you go to the cafeteria because you're not you know you're not shooting it people were just looking at me and then even people everybody knows I'm in makeup yeah but people were just like Suzanne are you okay and I'm like yeah I'm fine and they were just constantly asking me if I was okay and I was like guys I'm fine it's just the makeup you know but it was it was so convincing I mean it was it was crazy yeah it's really cool and I just really actually really like that and I really I, I was like wow I look so bad and I watched it with my friend yesterday and she was like oh my god you look terrible and I was like yeah and I really I really liked looking terrible it was a really nice um <laughs> It's really nice to look bad sometimes. Yeah, I really. Enjoy. I think that's a part I'd like to play. I just like to play somebody really ugly, and <laughs> really have. I mean, I was when I watched um, epi the episode with the uh, with the witch again. Um, yeah, I was just like, wow! Like to have a mask like that, that would be really really cool. You should have yeah, played the hag, awesome. of purple, the hag of purple. The hag of purple, yeah, the hag of purple. Because I think it's like when you when you have that thing put on you. I mean, and that takes much longer. I think they have to do like the pr prosthetics first, and then they put it on. It takes about three hours to get ready. But then, once you like see yourself in the mirror and you move, I think you can really develop your character um, in a, in, a, in a certain way that you wouldn't be able to do without that mask on. You know, so that's something really interesting about uh, having yeah having a crazy face on on yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. It's awesome. <laughs> Nina, do you have another question? Um, yes, I do. Um, in the Quest Army, we already saw Creo's diary, or parts of Creo's diary that Jan wrote. I don't know if you if you know about that. Yeah. Um, did you have any similar method? Did you flash out the characters of your father and your brother and your your husband in any kind of way to I don't know. You live closer or something? Yeah, definitely. Actually, me and Jan, we 
Um, I think we met at the first costume fitting, um, and then we basically talked about, and we didn't have a script by that time because, um, I don't know if I should talk about this because it's a little bit like a secret, but uh, we managed to get hold of the first draft of the script through the costume designer because she had them lying all there on her, on her table, and we were like, oh my god, is that the script? And she was like, yeah, of course. And we're like, we don't have it yet. And she's like, yeah, I know. She's like, but we want it. And she's like, well, you know, I. She obviously also needed it because she had to do costumes. We we're like, really, we want to know what's happening. We don't know anything, you know, like, please let us have it. So she she gave us some of the script. Um, so we were like, oh, my God, it was like gold for us. Um, so, but anyway, so as we were, like, working together, me and Jan wanted to do some character background uh, for our for our characters. And also because we said that, you know, he's been... He's been my my royal steward, and his father was serving my father, and there was my brother. So we kind of, you know, sat in we we sat in a cafe together and just talked about, you know, my brother, how what our relationship to him was, how was my relationship to my father, to my mother, where was my mother from, and so all these kind of key questions. I mean, we did some of it together, and then some of it, which is like, I think we even. Uh, I mean, he did his own, you know, character research, and I did my own, and then we got together again, and then we had some things that kind of overlapped. So he was like, "Oh, I had an idea about your brother. I was good friends with him." I was like, "Oh, actually, I had a different idea, or whatever." And then we kind of like um, read it out to each other and kind of found, yeah, just found what worked for us both, really. But yeah, that's definitely something I do is to to, especially if you have a scene where you talk about your father like if I talk if I have a scene where I talk about my father or my brother I need to know the relationship I I have or had with them because otherwise it would just come across as fake so I I basically make them up and I use whatever helps me to do that I mean I, I use pictures uh, I found or I wrote little I mean uh, Jan wrote little diary entries and I wrote like just stories of what happened um, and I did little like um, um, how do you call it? Sense memories, basically, like sense sense memory work that would remind me of a certain day in our life. Um, yeah, that would help me when I talk about him. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, thanks. Oh, how are the waffles doing? I don't know. <laughs> um, I think Judith is watching, so she'll probably pop up here in a minute and tell us how the waffles are going. Very good. <laughs> we'll wait for that. <laughs> um, Stacy, do you have another question? I do. Um, so I know that you were working with mostly scripted stuff and then interacting with the paladins who were unscripted. Did they ever throw anything your way that completely surprised you? And then did like the producers have a contingency plan if they did stuff that they completely had not anticipated? Um, yeah, we kind of, I mean, uh, yeah, basically we, we did ask what if what if this and this happens or what if they, what if they do this and then, uh, I mean, I can't, let me think of a specific um, what could have happened, like, I mean, I think they, Mm, well, do you have a special? Do you have a certain example that you you are thinking of? Um, well, like in the early, like when they just arrived to the to Sanctum, um, when they locked them up, uh, <laughs> it, it actually climbed out or something like that. What would have the production? <laughs> 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 or were they pretty sure they weren't going to? Like, <laughs> sorry, I didn't get that. Can you repeat it? Because I was. Um, kind of was some when, they, when they first arrived to Sanctum um, and they locked them up, uh, if if they had actually climbed out, like was there a contingency plan for that, or it, if, if when they were interacting with you, if they would said something completely off the wall, like was there was there a backup? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I don't know about that. I mean, I was um, I was actually surprised how how well, like, how much they were in it. I mean, I'm sure they had been briefed before. I don't know about what they what they were allowed to say or what they weren't allowed to say. Um, I think they also told us that we, they wanted it to be real. I mean, in a sense of, like, in, in um, Game of Thrones, like, also use real language, but just not use maybe this, the F word and stuff like that because they, they wouldn't be able to use it. Um, but otherwise, just... Um, 
I mean, I don't know how how the whole thing uh, was working with with them being locked up. I mean, I know that when they first were um, put into the forest, and Jan was there to to meet them. I think he was. Re I mean, that was like the the first uh, ever scene, and and I think he had a lot of you know. Uh, he was very worried about that, like how would they react to him and, and, and what would really happen. And I think he was even having, I think for that scene he had an ear in, like he had an ear in with the director telling him what to tell them, uh, which didn't work, I think, <laughs> which didn't work. So I think Jan was then saying that he was like, um, I think he told me that he just had a noise of going in his ear for like 20 minutes and he was like, oh my god, what's going on? He was sitting there in the forest, didn't know what was happening. Um, but um, but I think the, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know really if they had, a, I, I'm sure they, they, they thought of everything. Um, but I did see, which was very funny, because on my day off, and I think Jasmine and... Jasmine was had just been voted off. She just uh, had left the show, and then I think the day after, I went to the cinema. I had a day off, and then I was there standing, queuing for my ticket, and I saw Jasmine, and I was like, "Oh my God, I think that's I think that's the Paladin Jasmine. What am I? What is she doing here? I shouldn't be seeing her. I think you know. So I was like hiding, and I let them go in, and then I was I was going in the back when it was already dark. Uh, but it was very funny. There was I think there was three of them in the cinema that day. It was her, Jim, and and somebody else. And um, yeah, and it was just really weird to see them in in the cinema, just completely you know out of context. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I. I think they they had a contingency plan. I just I just don't know for how much or for what. You know. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, and I I noticed um, I noticed during uh, Stacy's question, Nina, that Judith stuck her Yay. head in. Did the waffles arrive? Yes, they <laughs> did. <laughs> Far too many okay. for me. <laughs> Actually, oh. This leads into an awesome question that's come in from uh, David Patterson, um, who would like to know, Suzanne, do you like waffles? Yes, I do. That's a, that's an easy one. Okay. <laughs> um, um, I like I like actually I I don't know which waffles you are eating, Nina, um, mm -hmm. but I like the waffles that you that have a lot of honey or like. You can buy them in the supermarket. Actually, they're like really thin. They're round. Mm. And they're Stroop really strawberries. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorites. Oh, they're great. I have them in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send them over. <laughs> okay. And looking at um, other questions coming in from social media, this is actually a really good one. Um, uh, at the Josh time, Josh on Twitter would like to know if Queen Ralia had to choose one paladin for her personal guard, who would it be and why? Oh, oh. <laughs> I think it would have to be Patrick. Yes, it would have to be Patrick because, um, I don't know, I mean the whole thing, I, I, you know, the, the, what you now know about the paladins through the show, you have to, you have to know that we didn't know. We just had a picture with their names and the basic descriptions. We never, I mean, and everything else was just as we met them and as I, I mean, I, and I didn't ha have a lot of interaction with them before we went and uh, fled the castle. So by that time, the people who were left were Patrick, um, um, Lena. Uh, Shondo, and of course there was uh, no. Well, who else was there? Help Andrew. Me. Andrew, exactly. Leticia, I think, was still there. Anyway, but the people who were like uh, in the end were were that I spent most of, of I felt like I spent most of my time with uh, was Patrick, Shondo, Andrew, and Lena, and um, and I just really I I just liked Patrick because he was, um, I think he was, I think he would make a good, he would really protect me well, and um, yeah, and he's strong, 
and he was sincere and he was nice and um, yeah, it had to be Patrick. But I don't want anyone else to be, you know, feel like they left they're left out now. But I'd like to I'd like to have all of them because then I think Shonda would also keep me really safe. You know? Um and Andrew would keep me entertained. <laughs> so and I'm guessing you're talking about the male guards now, yeah. I was I wasn't thinking of any girls. I was just, you know Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do one more question from social media and then we'll uh, move ahead. But uh, Stacy Carpenter uh, would like to know, well actually she says Marcello mentioned that he had input into his costume. You know, he, he talked about the swish, the swishy. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you make suggestions or were you able to give input to the costumers? Um... Yes, a little bit. I mean, there were loads of things I tried on. Uh, then they were all shown to um, to Rob, pretty much. And I mean, there was also there was a certain uh, color scheme that was running through. I think I had a lot of reds and red, blues, and it was basically red, blue, and a bit of beige. And um, yeah, my input was basically that sometimes when I didn't, you know, when, when I just liked something better or, I mean, I, I tried on so many dresses and some of them just didn't feel right or didn't fit or were too tight or were, like, um, too long. Um, so I could have some input in, in, in which ones of the dresses I liked more and which ones I felt more comfortable in. Um, and, yeah, yeah. Um, And uh, and I I mean I would have liked my hair down much more. I think Hannelore, the the hair designer, she she liked to put my hair up so the crown you could see the crown better and stuff like that. But I, I really liked my hair piece because the hair was just so big, you know, and I was I just loved it. I wanted to keep it. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Mm. Um. That's the the usual format, and we're going to do it this time as well as. But we normally switch things around, and I'm going to invite you to ask us any questions, um, anything that the Quest Army can answer for Queen Ralia. Yeah. So, um, how do you plan on getting the second season of the Quest? How do you think it's you gonna you you can make it happen? Oh, what right. are you what are you going to do? <laughs> that is a really, really good question. Uh, and what I'm going to do this time is if, if any of you guys uh, want to answer that, if you have something you want to say, just put your hand up so then I'll, I'll call on you. Any of you. Any of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go first and give you guys some time to think. I think what we have been doing has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, the the live tweets and the rewatches, as awkward a time as they are in Europe, uh, mm -hmm. it's been absolutely incredible to see um, people from around the world getting involved in the rewatch. Uh, it's the high. It's been the highlight of my week. Um, just like doing these hangouts, um, the rewatch is phenomenal. I'm really excited about uh, the next one. Project Hero was. I think a huge success. That was awesome. That was so um, cool. I cannot believe, I cannot believe the capacity of people. I, I just, it was remarkable that we picked one day, and we all rallied around each other and the show, and everyone did something. And it doesn't matter whether it was saying hello to a stranger or buying the next person's cup of coffee or, or making a donation to a charity. Everyone stepped up and everyone was willing to share what they did mm. and to tell ABC, this is what we did and this is why we did it. And, it. and it was because of the inspiration from the quest. So I'm at this point, I don't know what comes next because I, I think we can only just keep doing what we have been. I think the Quest Army has just been phenomenal in its support. Uh, speaking for myself, I've never reacted this way to a television show before. I've never um, been this involved in a fandom. It just hasn't happened. So it, it surprised it, it surprised me, you know, more than anything. 
Wow, but why do you? How do you think? Why do you think it happened with this show? Is it? Is it something? I mean, are you a fan of? Is it the reality TV that you? The kind of the, the the reality that got you hooked was it the combination? Was it the the format? It was the combination. I didn't. I didn't know that reality TV could be like this. I've been ruined by uh, the majority of other reality shows. Uh, uh, reality shows, less so contestant shows, but. The quest took everything that I loved. I'm, I'm a huge fan of um, fantasy, you know, same as everyone else. Game of Thrones and Tolkien and Robert Jordan and I can wax lyrical about fantasy. I, I, I blame my father. He read to me as a child and it stuck with me. So it, it was just that idea of taking Man. 12 people and throwing them into that world and, and using Mark and Jane's term immersive reality it's just brilliant and that to have you know you the cast members and also the extras the the peasants around castle sanctum to have this completely immersive um, setting and then have the paladins react to it and then the inhabitants of everrealm react to them mm. it's brilliant and then and then it was a it was also a good twist on the contestant on the contest format, you know, whittling them down to the one true hero. And mm. the fact that there was no cash prize as well. Um, just everything. Everything about the show uh, just appealed to me. Mm. And it had me hooked. And I didn't know I didn't know about it until a friend told me. And if they hadn't told me, I don't think I ever would have come across it. I never once saw it advertised. I never saw a promotion or a review. Nothing. And that would have been a tragic shame. And... And that's wow. the other thing. I think a lot of the Quest Army carries a little bit of anger towards ABC. We're thrilled that they made it, but we're very angry that they didn't stand behind it as much as they did. Yeah, I so. still don't really know what was going on there, but I'm kind of keeping hearing stories from um, yeah, different yeah. Slides, different angles. Anyway, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I could keep going, and I really don't want to. So please, someone else, please raise your hand. <laughs> Stacy, please go ahead. Well... We come, our, our family, we are very much in, in an acting and LARPing background, and it's something that we've always enjoyed. So this was a, a show that we could very much, um, you know, you imagine yourself doing. It was an opportunity to see other people do a thing that we would love to do, because there's so much suspension of disbelief, even in a very low-budget, at-home, you know, live action role playing scenario, even just going to like a renaissance fair or something like that, there is so much suspension of disbelief with that to then get to watch people go through this beautifully produced, rich environment with such, you know, I mean, incredible acting and, and just and all of the detail that went into it, all the care that went into it, all of the obvious um, enthusiasm from the entire cast, not only from the reality show contestants, but, but also from all of the acting cast. It was just such a engaging thing. Um, and I can't say that we're not involved in other fandoms, but this is the first show that I've seen in a really long time that I wasn't just okay with DVRing. You know, that I wasn't, that I really wanted to be there when it aired, that we sat around with our kids and watched when it came up on Blue, and it was it was really exciting to see something like this that, that was not like he said, not money focused. Not there wasn't a huge cash prize. There wasn't there was no motivation to win other than it was a good story and that that there was a noble goal to pursue. And that was really you guys made it really incredibly enjoyable for us. So as far as convincing ABC to do more, I feel like we have such reach with the technology that we have now. Um, if we'd had this when Firefly went down, <laughs> things might be different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's, I think if nothing else, it should be a huge wake-up call for ABC to have so many people so long after the show has aired, I mean, you know, it, that are still talking about it, are still getting involved, still being engaged, and still asking for it, that I feel like that's a, a pretty big thing. So thank you for your involvement. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. Thank you. That is 
it's really cool, man. I think the, the, the Quest Army is just amazing. I mean, especially for us when you just, you know, when you do a project, then it airs. It doesn't air in your country. And people are asking you, like, oh, what about this American TV series you did? Can we watch it? And I'm like, well, you can stream it or you can, you know, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's, it's just... Um, it's just a little bit. It's just amazing that the that the Quest Army exists to to keep reinforcing how 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 good it was and to just keep watching it and and keep spreading the word. And it just and I have to say it's much more fun to watch the Quest also for us with my friends and also with other actors. Uh, and you know I I'm still trying to organize to watch some of the episodes of the Quest with all of us together with me, Marcello, Jan, and Peter. And um, yeah, because that would be just so funny. Please take pictures or videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. If, if, that, if that happens, <laughs> yeah, if that happens, you have to do a live tweet. That would be incredible. <laughs> live tweet or a live stream. I'll just you know put a, put a camera onto the TV so you can you can that see. That would us be watching. amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any anyone else? Um, just throw your hand up if you. Yeah. I think Michelle, go ahead. Well, what I was thinking, when, well, the first time I saw something about the quest was on Twitter on the Lord of the Rings page. Mm -hmm. And you see, on Facebook there are many fan pages of many great TV shows, movies, and many fandoms are helping each other to grow. Like you have the Super Who Luck. And I was thinking, why isn't the Lord of the Rings fandom, the Game of Thrones fandom, helping the quest of getting them up? Mm -hmm. So I asked some admins to share the quest, and they're all, yeah, well, messaging me like, oh, wow, I really like it, and they should keep on sharing it. So I think that if we start doing that a little bit more often, mm -hmm. it can help. That's a really good idea, yeah. But yeah, you have to find people who are willing to share it, of course. But yeah. yeah. Definitely. Anyone else? Bear bear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. There's a lady that raised her hand. <laughs> I will let her go yeah, first. Me. Okay. Nina, oh, go ahead. So <laughs> I'll make it short. Um, I think it, it, it doesn't want uh, to eat waffles again. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it popped up on on uh, se in several places in the Quest Army that um, and it's also an an idea that you did and me had that we want to do the Project Hero every month. I know that David and Patterson um, already made a, you know, a Facebook uh, event page for next year, October the twenty-third. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll try to kind of do like little acts of kindness mm. on 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 a monthly basis, and yeah, just to keep it running to to show that it's not that we didn't get that energy together one time, but that we can repeat it and repeat it mm. until we. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely. That, the Project Hero was the most amazing thing ever. I mean, when I read about the, I mean, I was thinking about what I should do. I was like, what's really heroic and stuff? And it's just really hard. I mean, like, seriously, what is heroic? And then I was like, when I was reading about people's people's ideas and just seeing, like, I just remember seeing somebody put, like, uh, emergency bus fares into a into envelopes and just gave them out to people and, and wrote on it that if you don't need it, just give it to somebody who does. Mm -hmm. And just, I don't know, just something like that was like, wow, that that is such a cool idea. And, and, yeah, I believe that we should do it more often, not just once a year, but if we can, do something small every month, yeah. Well, you you donated br uh, blood, correct? I did, yeah. <laughs> was 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 that the first time you've done that, or do you often donate blood? No, I have I have done it before, but I haven't done it for a while, and it just kind of occurred to me. I was I was thinking, I was talking to my mum, uh, what I could do, and then, and she was mentioning um, the Red Cross, like just volunteering for the Red Cross. And it's actually something that I was I was thinking about doing any anyway, just kind of seeing what I can do, and then I was like. Well, I need to do something today. So even I was thinking, even if I get the, um, the registration form and then to take a picture and, and stuff, and then I was like Red Cross, and then I was like going on their website, and then I just saw like, do you want to donate blood? And I was like, yes. And um, and I am a little. I mean, I'm, I really don't like needles. I don't. I don't know anyone who does, but 
uh, yeah, but it's you know it's it's uh, it's a small thing, and it was uh, it was all right. I didn't die. <laughs> But it, 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 it's awesome. It's it's an incredible gesture, and, and again, it's just one of many that um, you know, cast, crew, uh, EPs, and the fans of the show made mm -hmm. on the twenty third. And I know that myself and uh, Rebecca, we we plan to do. Well, we plan to keep doing little things that we don't advertise. We're very uncomfortable advertising our good deeds that happens in the background. But we are going to keep trying to do something. Uh, mm -hmm. On the twenty third of each month, and we're, we're going to keep using Project Hero um, to to promote uh, the show. Mm -hmm. um, Bebe, yeah. let's let's hear from you. Yes, uh, everyone's mentioned uh, Project Hero. I agree. Please, please keep on doing the good things that you uh, to fit to be a heroic deed, rather big or small, as they say. Please keep doing so. Um, and if you could record. Record what you're doing. Uh, have some friends come with you as well. Um, I've had the experience of uh, doing a video. If you want to take a look, Bear Bear Operation Sandwich it's on YouTube. Okay, um, cool. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. I started handing out some sandwiches to some of the homeless that occupy a historic site out here in the capital. Cool. Um, I, I would encourage anyone to start making the plans for such things. And then it's also a lot helpful to have friends, most importantly. And then keep. Keep on tagging the quest. Keep on tagging the quest army. Keep on put continue the quest. Uh, be a hero. Do all those things because the message is getting out. Uh, everyone in my community, whether I'm in LARPing or outside of LARPing, they're seeing what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Not just through me, they're seeing everyone else's talents and deeds. And I'd say thank you for all what you've done. Keep doing it. Definitely. It's awesome, and you did a great job with that video, Beva. That was phenomenal. I'm um, gonna watch that. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to push it in my feed later today. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisselle, you've been quiet for a while. Yes, mm -hmm. I have. Um, I think it would be really cool if the quest was pushed to television t channels abroad. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could easily air it here in Denmark. They would have a big audience I feel because LARP is so common here um, fantasy is very very popular here so I think you know maybe if they or or they could even license the concept to 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 other stations to other channels to have foreign versions made that might also increase you know the reach of it and and more people would become aware of it internationally mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. Sorry. No, no. Sorry, Suzanne. Go ahead. No, no. Go on. No, I was just saying that. I mean, uh, I was just also interested in how, what you, what the Quest Army wishes the Quest Number Two to be, like Season Two of the Quest. What do you? Where do you see it going? Do you see the same characters in it? Do you see a different kingdom? What would you? What would you like to happen? Oh, that's a really good question. I would uh, want to see more of the this year. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, Nina. Yeah. I think, I don't know who it was. I think it was Peter who mentioned in an interview that maybe the next season will be uh, filmed in Spain or Northern Africa. Ooh. I, have, I have no idea if that is like solid information. Um, but Judith and I, we, we talked about it, and of course we would love to see the quest being filmed in a castle in Germany, so we could stop by. <laughs> um, but I think um, some kind of oriental setting would be super awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Anyone um, else? Maybe with, with the vizier, because the figure of a vizier is a rather an, an oriental figure. Um, yeah. As long as, first I know it, you know, Aladdin and... Uh, is no yeah. good and <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, and I think that would be a, an awesome setting. Definitely. Definitely. Anyone else have thoughts on season two? Definitely. I think it would be insanely cool, by the way, if, it, if season two had just one paladin from the army. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Okay, and unless anyone else, unless anyone else wants to um, 
talk about season two. I'm actually going to wrap it up. It's we unfortunately we hit the hour mark. I promised you all that time would fly. Um, I did just I just want to say one last thing um, before uh, we close, and it actually comes from my wife Rebecca, who's in the next room with our daughter. Um, but um, she just she wants to remind everyone. She wants to remind the Quest Army um, that. We, we need to keep pushing the positive message that the quest promotes. Uh, we, know, we need to show the network that people are willing to keep watching uh, something that promotes good qualities. Uh, one of the things that the show and the quest army have given us is hope. We want to make our Twitter feeds full of hope. It's something we often forget, but people need to see more of it in our daily lives. And that's very true. And and I was not I didn't use Twitter very much before the Quest Army and now I'm pretty much that's all I do. It's it just constant you know, mm -hmm. messages about the quest and it's the same on Facebook. I've taken over Facebook and Twitter with uh, the quest and I'm sure um, people that used to know me before the quest <laughs> are thick of seeing it, but I'm going to make every single last one of them uh, watch the show and fall in love with it. Yes. Yeah. On that note, um, this has this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us, for giving us um, your time today to you know just hang out with us. Um, the same for all of you, uh, Bear Bear, Lasell, Michelle, Nina, Stacy. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Uh, it it means a lot to me personally. It means a lot, um, I think, to the Quest Army. And it's it's again it's it's one little thing that we can all do to keep everyone talking about the show and to keep it in our hearts and minds. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. And on that note, um, I'm going to stop the broadcast. Thank you, everyone that's been watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the questions. I only got to ask, like, three of the questions that came in. But we had, you know, we had, like, three, four times as many. So thank you guys for um, wanting to talk, to talk to us and to Suzanne. Um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everyone. Um, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.